Wilson videos are powered by Jetline Systems. Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and this is IL-2 Sturmovic. Now, these videos are probably the second hardest videos they do. The first hardest being the fully loaded. That's why you don't get so many of them. They take forever to make and they're crazy technical to set up. The second hardest type of videos I do, these ones, are where I look at an entire sim platform it's really really hard to wrap up in a brief 20 minute 30 minute even an hour long video this is what this simulator platform is all about that's why you won't see many videos online about this is prepared or this is explain it's there's so much to it il2 Sturmovic has a long long legacy and for a while there it was one of my favorite sims and then it stopped being that around about the cliffs of dover time frame let me talk about this for a second the il2 Sturmovic is a type of ground attack aircraft a russian one in fact it's a two-seater there's a rear-facing gunner and obviously a pilot that's not the aircraft you're looking at currently by the way that's a lag three we'll get onto that in a minute and initially il2 Sturmovic, i think it was developed by oleg maddox and his team at 1c games uh, they came out with the original IL-2 Stomovic. It was well received, had a lot of aircraft in it from the Russians or Soviets, uh, and then a lot of aircraft from the Allies and, and Axis as well. And you could do all sorts of stuff. You could do ground attack, you could do air to air, it had multiplayer. Multiplayer was highly resilient and highly reliable, and everybody loved it. That was then followed on by a number of successions, a number of uh, sequels like IL-2 1946 and a few other things like that. And then IL-2 Cliffs of Dover. Now, around the IL-2 Cliffs of Dover time frame, well, that thing launched, it was buggy as crazy anything. It was really, really bad. And I understand there's a lot of pressure around publishing. I'm not going to go back through the history books and look up the exact facts and figures, but I know it was kind of rushed to market, and I think there was a publishing rush to rush it to market. And the guy who was responsible for it, in the same way that Sid Meier is responsible for civilization, the guy responsible for IL-2 Stamovic, I think Oleg Maddox, decided I had enough, and he quit. And they basically said there's going to be no more development on this. And they started making announcements that there would be follow-ons like Battle of Britain and things like that, but they never transpired. And then fairly recently, within the last few years, uh, 777 Studios stepped in. Now, 777 Studios have Rise of Flight, which is a World War I online, has an offline component, but predominantly online combat flight sim. They stepped in, and I understand they actually bought the rights to IL-2 Sturmovic and even maybe bought 1C Game Studios. So currently, IL-2 Sturmovic that you're looking at here is actually three different products which are all kind of running in the same platform. You can see them top right of the screen here. Battle of Kuban, Battle of Moscow, and Battle of Stalingrad. In fact, if you look through, for example, Steam, which is where you, easy way to find games. I don't recommend, by the way, you buy this on Steam. I recommend you, you buy this from their main website, which is linked in the show notes below, il 2 stomovic.com. That way all the money goes to the developers and we don't risk another platform, yet another platform, dying. Anyway, so I've got three titles here. They basically revolve around three time frames and three campaign time periods in World War II, uh, all within the same engine, and that's IL-2. Sturmovic is a game or flight sim engine slash platform. The engine is actually, I think it's called Digital Nature or something. It's very strange. The project now is actually developed by a combination of 1C Game Studios, former Sturmovic developers, so previous Sturmovic guys, and 777 Studios developers who worked on Rise of Flight. And the stuff that they do in developing the various aircraft in here is pretty phenomenal. They actually do take flights in real combat aircraft from the period that they're trying to model. They actually do dogfight or simulate dogfighting in those real aircraft to get the feel of how things are in reality and then transfer that to the sim. If you look on their website, you'll actually see pictures from Stepan Anastovich Mikoyan, who was 19 years old flying a Yak-1, and then a picture of him at 91 years old flying IL-2 Sturmovic Battle of Stalingrad in uh, 1C Game Studios' office, which is pretty darn crazy. Anyway... I want to start looking at the platforms that are not prepared, that are not explained, and so on. So we're going to start with IL-2. We'll cover DCS in a separate set of videos. What exactly is DCS? But this and DCS actually have a lot in common. They're both combat sims. The focus on this one is obviously World War II. It's obviously Eastern Front, primarily, uh, whereas DCS covers all the time periods from World War II up to modern time, but with a focus more on more contemporary, more modern stuff than it does World War II. Now, you need to, it's not free, you do need to buy one of the core products. So you need to buy like Battle of Stalingrad, that's where people normally start and work through the stuff in that. You get a number of aircraft with that, a number of, uh, you can see here, quick missions you can build yourself, or you, they're actually provided, but you can tweak them. Scripted missions and a career, and then other missions. And there's multiplayer as well. 
And then Battle of Moscow, Battle of Stalingrad are the add-ons, each add-on giving you more aircraft, more places to fly. Let me show you what this is like. By the way, this aircraft, I mentioned when we get to this, this is a Lag-3. I was just flying this. That's important. I was just flying this aircraft. What you're looking at is the actual game engine. This is what it looks like in the sim. That is my aircraft. That is the paint skin that I had on my aircraft. This is what you see in the sim. IL-2 Sturmovic is right up there with DCS World as being one of the most amazing jaw-dropping visual delights in simulation that you can ever get. And they've started extending this now to ground combat. They just came out with the tank battles thing, which is an add-on to this, which puts you in the seat, or various seats actually, in various period tanks to undertake tank simulated missions and everything. But we're not looking at that. Let me dive in here. Let me show you a quick mission. Okay, so you can tell here, look, there's a couple of tank battles here that I could do if I wanted to, but single aircraft, free flight, free flight, free flight. Then we have head-to-head, -head, one versus one. Then we have a, a group or a squadron versus a squadron. Various things going on. And this is in the Veliki Luki Winter map. I'm not going to be able to pronounce very much in here at all, but by the way, it's, it's Russian. But anyway, <clears throat> and here's all the other maps that I have because I have Moscow, Stalingrad, and Kuban. So I can actually go and choose, let's choose the Kuban Spring map. Here we go. A lot of coastal stuff. And again, squadrons and head-to-head -head and free flight. So let's go ahead and pick up this free flight. You can tweak this now. So you can drop this down. The red ones are standard aircraft that you will have if you own this campaign, in this case, Battle of Kuban. The yellow ones are collectors. Now, these are premium edition aircraft that you would actually go to iltstomovic.com and buy these premium aircraft. So in this case, there's the Lag 5 Series 8. Uh, what else do we have? There's the uh, Focke-Wulf 190A3. I'm not sure I have those. It is letting me choose them. I'm not actually sure I have them. I'm not going to choose them. I'm going to put myself back in a lag three. Now we can use the settings here, and this is where you can customize all sorts of lovely stuff, like what kind of paint scheme do you want to be flying on this aircraft? And it's not an ugly interface, but in places it's not perhaps the most intuitive. This is Snowcat. I like Snowcat. He does motorcycle vlogging. Um, hang on. There was one. I was trying to find you the one. There he is. Snow. It is Snowcat. Or grey one. Grey one. Grey one is the one that I was previously flying. You can set up here the range at which the guns converge. You can change the ammunition scheme here. For, are, we, are we picking up aerobatics? Are we going to be mo mounting smoke canisters on the wings to do aerobatics? If we really want to, we can do that. How much fuel are we going to be carrying? In this case, 100%. Um, where the guns converge. Are we running any modifications on this? For example, let's put in two 37mm SH-37 guns as a modification. That looks fun. I can mount rockets, I can mount bombs to this if I really want to. Beyond all that, notice my start position here is parked. Now this is a really, really accurate simulation of the flight dynamics of these aircraft, okay, and damage modeling and combat dynamics and, and all that stuff. It is not a fully interactive cockpit, so you are doing everything through the keyboard or through map buttons and keys on your joystick. Um, and other controllers that you have. So although parked here, I, I, you would need to map basically every control you, you want to start the aircraft to a various control that you have, or use the cheat button, which is E, to start the aircraft up for you. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put it on the runway, which has me ready to go. I can also put it at a thousand meters up. Notice everything's in meters. It's developed by Russians. So everything is meters as opposed to feet. I can click in here, weather and time. This is uh, early evening. Let's put it late afternoon. Try to get some of that sun setting colors going on. I've got a little bit of uh, wind, a little bit of turbulence. Got some heavy overcast uh, weather going on there as well. I don't have any ground targets. If we go into realism, I... Now, I've had this for a long time, and I've never got into it. And it's strange, because before I started doing YouTube videos, combat flight scenes was what I did. That was my, my main bag, especially World War II. I was an avid pilot in Microsoft's Combat Flight Simulator, in Microprose's 1942, in the European Air War, and so on and so on. Even A2A, not when they weren't even A2A, but A2A's Battle of Britain thing as well. Uh, was it Rowan's Battle of Britain? I can't remember. But anyway... All those things were my bag, and I started YouTube, what, five years ago, and kind of stopped doing that. So I'm incredibly rusty. Do not be afraid to go in here and turn on help. I have a little bit of help turned on, as you will see. Managing a complex engine is just fine.
for me and for anybody else who's who's into aircraft and simulation, right? Managing the prop pitch, the radiators, oil radiators, water cooling, all that good stuff, mixture, getting them just right is not that hard to do, except when people are shooting at you. When people are shooting at you, it's incredibly tricky to figure out what you need to do with the engine. So I've got helpers turned on for all that stuff, and I'm just going to focus on power and how I'm flying the aircraft and getting the nose pointed where I want it to be pointed. But don't be afraid to turn all that stuff on. This stuff is supposed to be fun, so have fun. Turn on whatever you need to make life a little easier. Even labels calling out where the bad guys are. You're playing, or I'm playing, on a monitor. This is a 24-inch monitor that I'm looking at right now. It's very different to having your field of view filled with the sky when you sit in a real aircraft. Instantly, talking to field of view, this is a VR simulator as well, and it is one of the best. It is right up there with DCS. They're neck and neck as to which one is better. Uh, I, my jaw was on the floor when I when I ran this up in VR deals, and I'll probably do a VR video. Anyway, this is free flight. Nothing's going on. I'm going to be flying over the edge of that island. Let's click on start. I want to show you the graphics. Now, I am running track IR. Track IR is kind of essential. There is a padlock button which means you can choose to target aircraft and then have the pilot's head automatically snap around to look at your target. That's padlocking. Uh, I've always found, since I first discovered Track IR, I, I stopped using padlock at that point. But it does have some pretty cool padlocking stuff built in. All right, so here we go. This is our mission. There are heavy clouds of 500 meters. The thickness is 800 meters. There is some wind. There is some turbulence. And we are flying a very, very small island here. Go. Now, it's going to start me paused and on the ground. Okay, which is what we expected. There's the weather. Now, this is where, all, let me just go through some stuff here. The blue icons, I can't move the mouse to show you, but the blue icons now down the right-hand side of the screen are the helpers that I have turned on. So I've asked the sim, help me with my prop pitch and my mixture. Help me with, the, if, they are on these, if they are on this aircraft, help me with the water coolers and the oil coolers and all that kind of stuff. Let me focus on flying. That's what that stuff is. Now, let me unpause it. All right, so we are clear for takeoff. And it's giving me some help now. It's saying extend the flaps to take off position. This is kind of cool. It will talk you through. There are so many aircraft in this. It will talk you through how to fly, how to land each aircraft. The other coolness is, let me turn off track IR and jump outside. Actually, you're not going to see it here. But if I were to drive this beautiful, beautiful aircraft into the grass and power it up, you'd see the grass bend from the prop wash. There are a lot of stunning details like that. If I fly this into a cloud, you're going to see moisture accumulate on the windshield which is beautiful. If I get very, very low to water and start shooting, any splashes that I fly through are going to be picked up on a windshield. It's the, the attention to detail on this is absolutely stunning. I cannot emphasize, emphasize that enough. And the flight model on most of the aircraft, I haven't flown all of them, so I can't say all of them, but on the ones I've flown is beyond belief. Difficult, hard, challenging, a lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. Got standard camera views like you have in DCS. This is F2. This is F3, fly by view. This is F1. Puts me back in the cockpit and I can zoom in and zoom out my views. I'm going to turn track IR back on now. I'm going to recenter it. Put my feet on the rudder pedals because I'm going to need them. And we'll recenter once again. Let's go ahead and put some flaps down. Just about 15 degrees, 15%. I'm not sure what flaps I need, but I have taken air off in this aircraft with those flaps. Look at the scratches on the uh, cockpit there. By the way, let's open this cockpit because that's quite a common technique as well. Open the canopy there. If I put my head outside, listen. Different sound. You're getting some wind now. Some prop blast coming off that engine, which is very nice touch as well. All right, powering up. Trying to keep this nose squared up, full power. Trying to keep this nose squared up. All I can see, obviously, is a tower dragger is what's out the left and right sides of the wi windows. I am pushing forward a little bit. I want to bring that nose down, bring the tail up. Don't push too much. You will just bend the uh, propeller when it hits the ground. It's 150 kph right there. That should be enough. Up we get. Come on. A bit of a bounce. And we are up. Gear up. Let's close that canopy now. Let's start trimming this. I am rolling to the left. We're going to trim it to the right. I'm going to put a little bit of positive pitch in there. Trim. Come on. I should be able to go hands off with this. It's saying climb at 260. I'm a little bit under that. We'll pull the nose up and head for these clouds here. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this, shadows from the clouds. Everything that we want in the big uh, civil aviation sims, IL-2 Stermovic has, and has had for a very long time. 64-bit. 
amazing performance amazing performance like in VI easily hitting 90 frames per second uh, moisture effects look at that moisture all over my cockpit beautiful beautiful shadows from the clouds shadows from the trees the trees are collidable anything you see on the ground is collidable you need to be aware of that I'm trying to keep this straight and level right now Bit tricky flying through a cloud all right so as we get up here let's pull all the flaps up let's bring that nose down we'll come off full power I've got some handy readouts on the right hand side of the screen I am cheating a little bit and having that information but I'm not in a real copy I'm in a virtual copy so why not why not use the tools available to make life a little bit easier? Look at that cloud shadows over there. Absolutely, absolutely breathtaking. Now there's clouds coming up and I don't want to be in those clouds. So I'm going to head for a little pocket in the clouds over here. And it works the way it should. Look, I'm heading for the pocket. So a little bit of widening out of my field of view, but then we're good. So we're flying now through this pocket. So you can actually dodge the clouds and play with the clouds, which is great. Love it absolutely love it no weird cloud rotation crap going on either oh a little bit too much cloud there we want to be going that way you can see the wisps of uh moisture there going past the windshield beautiful i'm gonna try to get this somewhat level that's where we took off from over there you see the uh, reflections there off the uh, items in the cockpit as we bank with the sun behind us over our left shoulder i think that was and trim 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 i'm gonna put this in a flyby view so turn off track ir show you what this is like his flyby bit of a wind there you can see it aircraft going slightly sideways let's go to the F2 view look at that jaw-dropping tons of graphical options to optimize this for your machine and also make it even better I don't have all the graphics turned on I have most of them turned on because I want to maintain 90 frames per second in virtual reality but if you turn them all on, you actually need to reboot, which is not why I'm not going to do it. But when you turn them all on, it's, it's uh, even better than this. And this is outstanding as well. Let's get down closer to the ground. Show you what's going on down here. Whoa, these trees are collidable. If I hit them, it will cause a problem. But look, no stutters, no pausing. Beautiful. You don't want to see this though, do you? This is a World War II combat sim. So a few of you are going through or shoot something. All right, we'll go ahead and shoot something. Let me show you the guns first. I think I've got the two sets of guns on this now. So first set of guns, there. Second set, cannons, there. I would typically use those in combat, the, the machine guns, the lighter guns. Would track on my target. And when I'm pointed at the right thing, cannon. Pretty cool. All right, let me get out of this. We'll put it into another quick mission. In fact, no, we won't. Let me go over here to the coast. I want to show you this. Let's go over to the coast, go over to the water. I wanted to show you what I was talking about in the water. I'm probably going to crash this. You'll forgive me, but we're going to crash it because we're going to restart it. But I want to show you, I only found this out slightly before recording this video and thought it was the most amazing thing. If you make a splash in the water and then fly through it, you'll get water on your canopy. Wonderful attention to detail which I don't think I've seen in any other flight sim. By the way, this supports multiple monitors as well, really well, if you have them and don't have VR and track IR. All right, make some, make some moistures here. Uh, no, I'm not doing a good job of hitting. There we go. <laughs> Got some moisture. Anyway, let's get out of this and I'll put it in combat. Oh, I really do like this sim a great deal. And again, I've got helper stuff turned on. As you get more hardcore with it, you turn that stuff off. I'm not hardcore with this. I'm not very good at combat anymore. So I have that all turned on. Let's go here. Squadrons. So uh, lag LA-5, Series 8. Two flights of four going up against some Junkers and some Heinkels. And we are starting 1,000 feet up. And our approach is scramble. So it's an intercept. Let's go. Let's see what we shall see. Notice as well, loading times on this are very, very good. It doesn't take a long time. Normally at this point I would edit it, but I'm not going to. That's it. It's done. And click on start. Now it's going to start again. Paused. Oh, it started me on the ground. That's not ideal. Okay, let's not start on the ground. Let's finish this mission. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. We'll finish this mission. Go back to the main menu 
and try to start this properly. So I think it's because of that scramble. So we go face to face. And my start. What is going on here? Random. Oh yeah, that's the settings for the AI. How good are they? Random. Now I think because I'm not scrambling now, we're going face to face. I think we're good. Start. Hmm. And there we are. We're face to face with the enemy who are directly in front of us. I've still got all my helpers on. We're going to unpause this. Zoom out. Here we go. So by moving the uh, stick there, I turn the auto level off, which was turned on by default as one of the helpers. I'm going to get beaten up very quickly, I'm sure of it. Oh, God, not good. And I'm using different guns here as well. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And again, it's hard not to just admire the scenery here. But that's not our job. Our job is to not suck. So, oh, that's the thing I found with the AI. They love to fly into the sun when you're trying to shoot them. Which is a little frustrating, but that's what they were doing in real life, too. I thought I saw a canopy there. Like somebody had bailed out. Maybe not. Wishful thinking. Let me try to get behind one of these without him shooting me. And just pick away at him. You can see the damage modeling. The damage modeling is very good. It is very realistic as well. I don't have unlimited ammo. You actually have, World War II pilots actually had very, very little ammunition. You need to be accurate, which so far, obviously, I'm not being. So what I tend to do is try to get in position and try to go either for the cockpit, if we're going head to head, or one of those engines. Try to put some lead into one of those engines there, if we can. He's gone. Look at the smoke black and white or gray and white so he's leaking fuel and he's got a fire something's going on there which is great or some internal damage to his engine there let's see if we can get one of these other guys over here now there are two types of campaign in IL-2 Stamovic as well oh I can't see because I'm in the clouds oh there's one one is the scripted campaign. Obviously, that's a scripted campaign. It follows a story. It's pretty cool fun. And then there's the uh, career mode. I understand the career mode follows accurately the historical events of the theater that you're in. And you're just playing a part in those historical events. So you're going to get varied missions. They feel pretty varied. They don't feel scripted. To play into the objectives that were taking place but ultimately the success or failure of what's going on on the ground is not up to you I actually like that I guess because I've been playing on the winning side every time oh that was terrible oh we hit something look at that he had a serious issue and down he goes you will see them bailing out you'll see canopies and uh, people jumping out of that aircraft if I didn't just cause an explosion in the cabin I don't know what I hit that caused that explosion that's very unusual He's having a hard time, look. Plumes of smoke and fire. And didn't take a lot of ammunition to do so. Now I'm heading straight up, which means I am going to now stall the aircraft. Oh, God. All right. It's telling me, your speed is too low. Do not pull the stick, which I was just doing. All right. Nose down. Let's try to recover that stall. Very hard to do because of these beautiful clouds, which is just where it should be. Now I'm lost because all my targets are above the clouds that I'm now in. Which is great as well. You can turn on helpers to fix that. The little guidance arrow is showing you where the targets are, where you need to be. No artificial horizon. Yeah, it's telling me I destroyed one. Good. So we're relatively level. We are climbing. There is a bad guy up there. But you get the idea, right? Tons of aircraft to fly on both sides of the conflict. Tons of aircraft that you can buy and add on. If you go to the main website, you can get them there. Lots of variety and an incredibly active multiplayer scene as well. Now, it used to be that IL-2 1946, heavily modded, was the go-to IL-2 online. And I think now, now that... Uh, Triple Seven Studios have got involved. I think Stamovic, Battle of Moscow, Battle of Kumban, Battle of Star Stalingrad are starting to overtake it in popularity. Rightly so. There we go. We managed to get up to his level. Tricky to climb all the way up here. He is just a transport, so he's not going to shoot me back, which is helpful. So we can start picking and poking holes in him. We are getting very low in terms of speed. I see. 
I want to get that engine. I just want the engine. You can break the landing gear off as well. There you go. There's the engine. Black smoke coming out. We've caused some damage to the engine itself. Let's put the cannon in there. Nope, no cannon. Now I'm getting a little bit too close. You can collide with them. It will cause you issues. And I did. I actually collided with that aircraft. So if I turn off track IR, let's go outside. See what happened? I bent the prop. So the thing that actually hit that aircraft was my prop. Now I'm without power. Now I have a problem. And they're cool. And I'm silent. I'm a glider. There's the rest of the fight going on behind me. Let's see if we can land there somewhere. Track IR back on. Nice green fields down here. All of them look suitable for landing. Is that an airfield? In the distance. That is an airfield. Okay, let's see if we can put it over there. So we're at 400 kmh. Kph, sorry. Let's reset to track IR. I don't know if I'll make it, but we'll try our best. We might be able to bring this home. I'm not sure how well I'm going to do. I'm not very good at recovering after catastrophic <laughs> failures in these things. But we'll try. We'll try. There's the runway. Feels like a good place to end the video as well. Do or die, this will be the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse. I might start filming the career mode. I do have a career mode pilot, uh, Fruglowski Fruglovich, who's doing pretty well. He hasn't died yet. Maybe I'll record some of his missions, but I want to do this and I want to do uh, DCS and show you this and just show you more sims. The other sim I decided to look at is Condor, by the way, the gliding sim. Don't know if it's going to help me today. Landing gear is down. Let's see how we do. Now there is a way to save these replays. So you can look at them later. I'm not sure how to do that. All right, I'm pulling back on the stick here. We are down. I'm pulling hard back on the stick. Let's start applying some brakes. Oh, we ran off the end of the runway, but you know, what do you expect? Got a catastrophic engine failure on this aircraft and we still made it back to roughly the airport. Whoa, I do that every time I land this aircraft ground looping it <sighs> don't know why I need to work on my technique there gosh there we go home at home home at last pretty cool huh let's go look at that damage yeah you can see where I stripped all the paint off the blades <laughs> no other damage though no holes they can just give me a new engine we're good to go again as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this my name is frugal this is IL2 Stamovic Hopefully more to come. And I will see you all very, very soon.